Hi, everyone. It's me. I'm Robin O'Neill. This is me reading stuff after dark. This is when you and I sit on a couch. And I just sit here and I talk to you. And then I say, oh, God, you know what, man? I read a great poem earlier today. Let me go get that book. I'll be right back. Do you need anything? Do you need a water? I'm getting some tea. I know that's odd. I know, I know. I know. I normally drink coffee. I'm doing tea. Call me crazy. You want any? You want lemon in it? Okay, I also have some cookies that Billy made. You want some of those? Cool. All right, I'll be right back. So that's what we're doing. We're just sitting here talking. I'm actually not on a couch. I'm sitting on a drum throne. That's what I use in my studio. I use a drum throne because they are... To me, they're the most comfortable things to sit on while I draw for long hours. It's late, and I'm tired, and I am drinking tea, but it's not helping my, my, uh, my exhaustion. I'm doing the best I can. I'm going back and forth. I finally put a DVD player back in my studio. I had been attempting to not watch as much, like, a, I don't know, as many TV programs. I don't have cable in my studio anymore, and having cable in my studio... Uh, was really the key to, well, I didn't have success, I wouldn't say that, but it was uh, the key to productivity for me. And I just kind of decided to try to not have it in my studio. And I've actually tried that for, God, it's been like a year and a half. And guess what? It doesn't work because the second I put this TV and DVD player combo thing in my studio again, it was like I was killing it. I can't stop. I'm in here, and I'm actually making good moves in my studio again. So there you go. That's the story. I'm having a hard time concentrating on wanting to do this because I'm also back and forth between um, Felicity, season one. I'm watching that. And then I saw Norm MacDonald, uh, who is one of my biggest heroes. He's talking about golf over on Periscope right now. He told us that he's got a new thing starting today. He did it. He is putting 1,000 times a day in an attempt to get better. So that's what I learned over there. But I am happy to be with you guys because I did uh, read some really good poems today. And the only thing that they have in common is that they're in the same collection, but they're by two different poets. And the only thing they have in common is that they're American poets who are both dead and their first names are William. So I guess that's the theme just by accident. Both of these uh, poems come from the book Good Poems, which is a Garrison Keillor. It's uh, based on the writer's almanac. He put this book together. It's a penguin book. I really recommend it. Any page you open, it's good. They're all short. They're all strong. Uh, let's see, which one am I going to start with? It's hard to say. Uh, I guess I'll go with William Stafford. This is um, William Stafford. He was, uh, his. just so you get an idea of when these guys are alive, I'm going to tell you, because I wanted to look that up today. 1914 to 1993. I really like William Stafford. He is from Can- He was from Kansas. Uh, and I think he was pretty old when he had his first collection published. Not old, but he was he was around 50, I think. So I always like that in a person. You know, you're more ripe. You're more ready when you're older. Uh, we should all be so patient. I don't know if that's what happened, if it was patience, but uh, I like it. What else do I... Oh, he has... You know, I found this actually on Wikipedia. <laughs> I normally don't read to you guys from Wikipedia, uh, but this is a quote that I liked that has a lot lot to say about life, but even more to say for any of us in any of these crazy creative fields. I think this is helpful. Here it is. I keep following this sort of hidden river of my life. You know, whatever the topic or impulse which comes, I follow it along trustingly, and I don't have any sense of its coming to a kind of crescendo or of its petering out either. It is just going steadily along. I kind of read that weird, but that's because I wrote it down weird (laughs) with with my serial killer handwriting. I've got great handwriting, and then I got another version of it that's terrible. Look, it's five minutes. I need to read you this poem. William Stafford, A Ritual to Read to Each Other. 
If you don't know the kind of person I am, and I don't know the kind of person you are, a pattern that others made may prevail in the world, and following the wrong God home, we may miss our star. For there is many a small betrayal in the mind, a shrug that lets the fragile sequence break, sending with shouts the horrible errors of childhood, storming out to play through the broken dike. And as elephants parade holding each elephant's tail, but if one wanders the circus won't find the park. I call it cruel, and maybe the root of all cruelty, to know what occurs but not recognize the fact. And so I appeal to a voice, to something shadowy, a remote important region in all who talk, Though we could fool each other, we should consider, lest the parade of our mutual life get lost in the dark. For it is important that awake people be awake, or a breaking line may discourage them back to sleep. The signals we give, yes or no or maybe, should be clear. The darkness around us is deep. Okay, and I'm even more excited about this next one. This is William Meredith. This is called Poem About Mourning. William Meredith was alive around the same years. He lived to be a little older, 1919 to 2007. I don't know why I'm so insistent on telling you guys their birth years and death years. That's new for me. You know, there's always something new. All right. Poem About Mourning, William Meredith. Whether it's sunny or not, it's sure to be enormously complex trees or streets outdoors, indoors whoever you share, and yourself, thirsty, hungry, washing, an attitude towards sex. No wonder half of you wants to stay with your head dark and wishing rather than take it all on again. Weren't you duped yesterday? Things are not orderly here, no matter what they say. But the clock goes off, If you have a dog, it wags. If you get up now, you'll be less late. Life is some kind of loathsome hag who is forever threatening to turn beautiful. Now she gives you a quick toothpaste kiss and puts a glass of cold cranberry juice like a big fake garnet in your hand. Cranberry juice. You're lucky on the whole but there is a great deal about it you don't understand. I know I'm always admitting to crying. That poem made me cry earlier today, and then I cried about a million other things, and then I picked myself up, and I went about my business, because that's life, my friends. So I hope you enjoyed that tea with lemon and the cookie I brought you. I know the couch isn't that comfortable. I can tell we're going to keep talking. Let me go get my drum thrown. I'll wheel it in here. You can sit there. Tell me about your week. Tell me how you're feeling. I'll just be here to listen. I'll bring you more tea when you need it. We can be up all night. I wish that could happen. I wish I could hear all about you guys. Instead, I'm just talking into a shitty mic with a shitty mic stand that's only two inches tall. Anyway... I do love talking to you guys. Thank you so much for encouraging me to do another After Dark podcast. I feel like these were really good poems. And and that's funny because they came from a book called Good Poems by Garrison Keillor. That that came out, I don't know when, but it's Penguin. It's a Penguin book. Buy it. Remember to buy books. Remember to be good to yourself. I love you guys. I'll see you on Monday. Good night. Good night.